Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Lispy. First, before I get started with the day's book review, I have to tell y'all, I am so, so excited and so grateful and thankful and blessed that I had such a huge jump in subscribers this weekend. Um, I was really excited because I was at 86 subscribers on YouTube. And in order to get your custom YouTube um, link, you have to have 100 subscribers. And so I put out a tweet and I had my friends and my family share. And I was like, hey, y'all, I'm 14 subscribers away from getting my custom YouTube link. And honestly, like, that's all I've been work like, all I've been really, really excited for um, over the past couple of years. Because when you hit 100 subscribers, you get your custom YouTube link. Like I said, when you hit 10,000 subscribers, you get a plaque. And so, you know, baby steps. I'm super, super stoked that we got. 200 subscribers like what even is this this is so awesome so i'm super super grateful and thank you all shout out to everybody who shared shout out to everybody who just subscribed thank you thank you thank you for hitting that awesome subscribe button and for supporting a little old librarian so let's get to the goods what y'all are here for right um since i got so many subscribers i'm gonna try putting out more content more frequently um starting to share tech tips uh, more librarian stuff but of course good old book talks so the first book i'm gonna tell you about or actually the only book i'm gonna tell you about today um is this really cool book i've been super duper excited for the one it's two authors the first author is one of my favorites um candace bushnell Bushnell, Bushnell, I don't know. But she is the author of Sex in the City, which is one of my favorite shows. And the other author is Katie Katugno. Um, she's the author of Top 10. And if you've ever seen one of her stories or her novels, they're beautiful. They have really gorgeous covers that have like actual photographs on them. And they came together and they wrote this new book that I had on hold at Austin Public Library for like three months. I put it on hold back in like March and I just got to read it. It was awesome. And it is called rules for being a girl and it's really cool you can see the fire on the cover and it's just gorgeous so this book is about a our main character and she goes to a private school now that's important to remember because if what happened in this book happened in a public school Mm -mm, wouldn't have gone that way. And if it had happened in Texas, mm -mm, wouldn't have gone that way either. So our main character, y'all know how bad I am with names, um, goes to a private school and it's one of those elite schools that like are amazing for college prep. And her goal is to be a journalist and to go to Brown University. And so she's like top student, you know, does gets gets good grades, is a co-editor with her best friend the school for the school newspaper. She's like on it, you know, she's on track. And her English teacher is someone that she really highly respects. And, you know, he reviews her college admissions essay and they call him Bex for Mr. Beckett. And all of her friends, like they all love him. They think he's this amazing teacher, but not just as a teacher, but also as a person, which I think is important as an educator that your students see you not just as a teacher, but also as a person. But we know there's a line, right? Well, this teacher crosses that line. He gives our main character a ride home and he tells her we're going to stop at his apartment to pick up a book that he's been meaning to give her. And when they go into his apartment, she goes in with him and he kisses her. It stops there, right? It doesn't go any further than that. But as a teacher, he has now drawn a line. He's crossed that line, crossed it completely. Like he took this kid home, took this kid home to his apartment and kissed her. Does not matter if, you know, maybe she was giving off a vibe or if she was dressed a certain way. He's the adult in this situation. He should have known better, right? Doesn't matter how old he is. Doesn't matter how close they are in age. Doesn't matter that both families come from money. He is the adult. And this is where he crosses that line. So then our main character, um, she is applying to Brown, like I said. And the the teacher Bex's family has a lot of money that they donate to Brown every year and he even tells her when you go for your interview look for the Beckett Auditorium because it's the one that his family has paid for and so when she gets her letter from Brown she doesn't get in it's not hard to figure out why it's not hard to figure out how that happened I was freaking livid. Now that's halfway into the book, right? So I'm reading it and I get and I get to that scene and I'm like, okay, like 
we can't, we have to be almost done, right? Like there's no way that this isn't like 70% of the book are already done, right? Like there can't be much more than this. She's going to fight this. She's going to get in done, right? No, this poor girl, Maureen has a shit show of a rest of her senior year. So then remember she goes to a private school. So she goes to her principal and tells him what happened and basically tells her like, well, you have no evidence. You can't prove it. Great. Then her friends shun her because the teacher gets suspended for a day. One school day. And, but they don't know that. They just think he's suspended, right? And all the other kids are like, way to go. Thanks for being a slut. It's all your fault. And they're like shaming her, not even knowing the entire story of what happened. I was livid even more. As the story goes on, of course, you know, things things get um, solved. And of course, you know, we find conflict management. The teacher comes back. She has to figure out how to deal. But in the end, some really important voices come forward. And the school is able to listen to all the voices and all the past things that this teacher has done. And they finally get the evidence that they need to have this teacher dealt with basically, because I don't want to give spoilers away. But it was so freaking good. And it really touches on those, um, those, those uh, double standards that we as girls and as women have to deal with every day. And I thought it was really, really cool um, seeing Maureen's eyes just kind of open to all the unfairness that comes with being a girl that she didn't notice before. And she kind of learns her privilege and she kind of, she learns things about herself and about her own background. Um, And I thought it was really, really cool because it's not like bam in your face feminism, but it's like slow growth. And I think that's something we all need to appreciate and process is that growth and noticing things is what's important. So it's a really, really awesome book. I really hope you give it a chance. It is amazing. Again, that is Rules for Being a Girl by Candice Bushnell and Katie Contugno. Absolutely fab. I got it from the Austin Public Library and I hope you give it a chance. Happy um, almost end of summer. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay hydrated. Thanks for watching.